Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to our webinar titled Daily Management with Kinexus, from Huddle Boards to Web-Based Technologies. I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to be here with us today, as we have attendees from a number of different industries, from healthcare, manufacturing, government, uh, architects, and uh, in other industries. So thank you all for being here today. I'm Mark Raven, VP of Customer Success for Kinexus. I'm the author of the book Lean Hospitals and co-author of the book Healthcare Kaizen. I'll be a host, one of the presenters today. And I'm also joined next to me by Dr. Greg Jacobson. Hey, Mark, thanks for the introduction. I'm Greg Jacobson, I'm the Chief Product Officer, one of the co-founders of Kinexus. Founded Kinexus really because didn't have any compelling way to manage all the lean and improvement work that an organization was doing electronically in a way that really could engage staff. So that's what we're, we do here at Kinexus. That's what we do, and that's what uh, our customers in all these different industries do. Uh, so whether you're a customer or just learning about Kinexus and lean, we appreciate you uh, taking time to be with us today. We're also going to be joined uh, by two special guests from different healthcare organizations, uh, Michael Lombard from Cornerstone Healthcare Group and Brian Tabor from Middlesex Hospital, and we'll let them introduce themselves as, uh, as we go. But before we start, I'd like to review just a few logistical details and the agenda. Uh, we're going to present for about 40 minutes and leave, uh, try to leave a good 15 minutes for Q&A. So if you have a question, uh, feel free to send those in along the way using uh, the go to webinar control panel box. We can send those in in kind of a, a continuous flow, if you will, rather than batching those up at the end. And uh, we are going to send out slides and a recording of the webinar within about 24 hours. All of you will get that um, via email. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and get started. So one thing I think is really important to emphasize um, is that Lean is about more than tools. Lean is not just about tools and, and it's not just about projects. The diagram that we see here on screen uh, basically comes from Toyota where they talk about you know, the, these three sides of the triangle, the technical methods and tools, the philosophy that underlies the use of those different methods and the man managerial system that we use on an ongoing basis centered around the idea of not just improving, but developing people, not just fixing problems, but also developing people. And that all of this is an integrated system. It's hard to pick and choose or, or cherry pick just one piece of this approach and, and, and call it lean, but doing all of these things together, the, the technical, the managerial, with the right philosophy is what leads to an organizational culture that we mm -hmm. might recognize as a lean culture. And, and, and you know, I love, I love analogies, Mark, and I always think of kind of a tool as maybe a fad diet versus a system as a lifestyle. And so when we're talking about lean and organizations that are doing this well, they're taking the lifestyle, we like to refer to them as lean practitioners. Right. You know? we're, we're, we're practicing lean, like yep. physicians practice medicine, right? We're, we're, we get better at this as we go. And I think, you know, one of the good trends that we see not just in healthcare, but um, you know, we've maybe seen it first in other industries, is this idea of lean as a management system, what sometimes people call uh, daily lean management. And some of the practices that I touched on in, in the book Lean Hospitals are the things that we're gonna talk, talk about today. Um, first off being uh, strategy deployment, second being the idea of doing process audits or what people in healthcare often uh, call rounding, um, tracking performance measures that matter, and then tying all that into Kaizen or continuous improvement and our staff ideas. And then the, the fifth thing is doing daily stand-up meetings, what people often call huddles. So as we go through this, I'm going to talk about these practices. Greg is going to interject a little bit with some of his own stories and, and some ways in which our Kinexus software helps support these approaches. Then we'll have Michael and Brian also um, sharing some of their experiences. And, and I just want to add, you know, the continuing that kind of lifestyle analogy, I look at this almost like cross training, right? I mean, every organization is, is competing in their own sport per se. They, you know, they have their own record, but it's really well shown that, you know, you need to train in a broad way to really get good at that sport. And yeah. so um, what we're going to talk about are these five principles. What I think is really interesting is how these principles 
are actually applied to an organization might look a little different. Right. And so we're going to have Michael and Brian talk about the manifestation of these in their organizations mm -hmm. and kind of understanding the principles and how they could actually apply to your organization. That's really when you start practicing something versus right. a tool that you're just right. And I think another thing we see in, in successful lean cultures is that we're practicing, but we have a coach. Right. Kind of going to that sports or fitness analogy, mm -hmm. um, no matter how experienced you are, um, professional players in different <clears throat> sports still have coaches and individual trainers helping them see problems or opportunities that maybe they don't see on their own. And I also want to recommend two really great books uh, that, that delve more into this idea of uh, daily lean management practices. Um, the first on the left is uh, by David Mann. And in fact, his third edition of this book just came out. So if you go to Amazon, look for uh, a version of it with a blue cover. It's actually his third edition of the book, which includes uh, more examples from healthcare and, and other settings. But I know even that first edition that was more about lean production uh, has been really helpful to healthcare leaders that I've given th that book to. And I know the third edition will be even better. The second book on the right is, is brand new. And I would actually also recommend to people outside of healthcare. Uh, this book is called Beyond Heroes. It was published by Kim Barnes, who until recently was a, a senior leader at the Theta Care Health System. This book really does a nice job of laying out their different components. I think they, they, they use a puzzle piece analogy of 12 or 13 different puzzle pieces that create this interconnected system. So the first of the five points I wanna just introduce briefly is what's called strategy deployment as a management methodology. Um, you see pictured here one of the first books that was published on the topic, the Japanese term that, that sometimes gets used is Hoshin Kanri, but in English we would generally call this strategy deployment or policy deployment. The, the term translates roughly to mean management compass. So the, the idea is that we're trying to get the organization aligned around our true north objectives, that we're trying to align not just goals and, and measures through different parts of the organization, but we're also trying to align our improvement activities to those goals and objectives that we have. We're trying to help create focus and do so in a more visual and transparent way. And, and the second image you see on screen here is uh, a DVD that was um, created and, and published by the Theta Care Center for Healthcare Value that talks about the use of strategy deployment as a management system within Theta Care. But what we you know, generally see, one aspect of strategy deployment is trying to create this true north or what some people would call a balanced scorecard. Then these objectives are not just deployed in a top-down way. That's one of the things I think is really interesting about strategy deployment. Um, senior leaders will work, talk as a team and define what are generally our four to five true north categories, but then they'll, what we call play catch ball, with their next level of leadership. And so, well, here's what we think, what do you think? Give us some input, do we have this right? Do we need to tweak it, are we off track? And as, as you eventually move down through the organization to frontline leadership, we're checking and discussing and getting input on, you know, for example, um, you know, kind of prototypical health system might have true north categories, including safety. Um, where specifically this year, we're measuring falls and infection rates. Now, over time, the specific submeasures might change once we've hopefully dramatically reduced falls and infection rates, but safety remains a true north. And then we might measure quality, which might include uh, patient mortality, waiting time for appointments, you know, access to care is a different dimension of quality. Uh, people or staff, you know, we may measure staff engagement, we may uh, measure injury rates, and again, align all the different parts of the organization and their improvement work to helping improve that. Then we might also look at finance and a couple of sub-measures, and we may look at the patient or the customer. Um, and, and so we, we're trying to create alignment where every team or every department doesn't just choose their own direction. Um, some of the sub-measures might change, but it's mm -hmm. in alignment with the overall organization. Yeah, I think, I think the way I conceptualize this and, and, and then I'm actually going to bring up the sporting analogy again. Not that we had any plan on you're, doing you're a sporting an analogy. Athlete, right? <laughs> Neither um, am I. Sorry. Um, but what, the way I look at this is, you know, how do you go from a mission statement of an organization 
into actually figuring out what does that mean on a on a day to day basis on how I can improve. And then right. and, and so I think this is that translating, you know, for a healthcare organization, you know, we give, um, you know, great hair, care to our community. OK, well, what does that really mean? Well, right. OK, these are these are actual different metrics that we can work towards that have been defined by the leadership of an organization. Right. And, and I think also what's important to understand is that not only are there going to be some metrics at the end, you know, the, or not metrics, but kind of goals at, at, a, at a very high level. But there's also going to even be, you know, how those translate in an individual department. And yeah. And I think of this as um, a way to be more of a balanced organization, right? I mean, if you look 20, 30 years ago, finance was the only metric that was measured. And it kind of gets into the cross-training part. It's like there's only so much basketball that you can get good at by just playing basketball. Right. Once you start developing the athlete as a more well-rounded person, you all of a sudden realize they become a better basketball player. Yeah. And I think that this kind of creates a framework to help organizations think through that process. Yeah. And, and you make a great point that these objectives are, are usually driven from a discussion around the mission, vision, and values of the organization. So a couple of months ago, um, I was working uh, alongside with Karen Martin, another author and consultant um, with the health system where dis uh, coming up with this framework was, was built upon that existing mission, vision, and values. Lean or strategy deployment doesn't dictate what those are, but right. it builds upon those so that we can get more measurable in, in learning if we're meeting our objectives. And I just wanted to, to bring up what, what we're going to do kind of as a framework is Mark is going to give a little bit of the background with me doing my typical little interject interjections as I do in my life. But um, um, I wanted to really focus on, okay, so what is, how does Kinexus help that? And what we're doing here is we're looking at a opportunity for improvement, happens to be a healthcare opportunity for improvement. But what you're going to notice down here on the, on the bottom left of your screen is that there's a strategic initiative. And so every piece of work that's done in Kinexus can actually be tagged with a strategic initiative. And what that allows you to do at an organization is then to run reports very quickly, very easily to see, you know, are we actually addressing all of our initiatives in, in a balanced way? And, and you can see, you know, actually, you know, maybe we're not doing a lot on the satisfaction and, and then it could allow a um, process improvement coach or uh, operational excellence coach or even the C-level leadership to say, hey, guys, you know, we really we're doing awesome on safety. We need to focus on satisfaction or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. And Kinexus creates that visibility into understanding what the improvement work is and, and what part of uh, what part of the strategic deployment it's addressing. Yeah, and I think it's you know, important to point out, um, you know, for people in different industries and different types of organizations, Kinexus doesn't dictate what those initiatives are. It builds right. upon what leaders have defined and allows people to track things that that matter in a way that matters for them. So the second thing I want to talk about is the idea of uh, process audits or, or what sometimes is called rounding. And I think the word audit, that's a scary word mm -hmm. if anyone does. I've, I've, only, I've never been audited by uh, the IRS, but it's a word that sends chills down people's spine. I'm but, knocking on wood break. Yeah, but you know, this idea mm -hmm. of rounding, of leaders being engaged um, to, to help oversee operations and processes in a constructive, collaborative way. And I think you know, one of the leaders who sets a great example of this is Dr. Gary Kaplan from Virginia Mason Medical Center in Seattle, um, doing what are sometimes called Gemba walks. You know, the Gemba meaning the the place where the work actually happens. Um, so, as was described on you know the CBS Evening News, you know, Dr. Kaplan tours the hospital daily, looking for problems and solutions. Everyone is encouraged to look for changes to make work more efficient. And you know, in this approach, it's not that he's the only one finding and giving solutions, mm -hmm. but it's it's going out there and uh, encouraging people, um, leading by asking questions, um, trusting the people who do the work. That's, I think, part of the underlying philosophy where somebody could go and do a gamble walk and say, well, I'm out there in the workplace in a really clumsy, ineffective way. We don't want leaders going out and, uh, and blaming people. And so I think that's part of the difference of kind of this a tr traditional approach is more of, you know, policing a process. So you see the scowling cop here, you know, management would go out and say, well, I caught you doing the wrong thing. I'm going to write you up. It's, it's punishment and blame focused. Mm -hmm. And that's not really a good, healthy environment mm -hmm. for improvement. Where I think in a lean culture, if you forgive the kind of overly friendly, huggy guy here, um, it's, it's meant to be a more collaborative process that we're, we're 
asking questions of inquiry, not why why did you screw that up, but why are we not able to follow the right process? And I'll, I'll illustrate that with an example here. And you know, if we catch people doing something that doesn't seem like the standard process, well, maybe they're in the middle of Kaizen, right? So if we come down on people, we, we might stifle Kaizen and, and drive problems underground, which yeah. is not what we want to do in a lean And, and that's lean exactly setting. what I was going to say. I think the, the left side of the screen here is going to promote the behavior of sweeping things under mm -hmm. the rug, right? Yeah. Whereas the right side is going to promote the behavior of looking at problems as opportunities and how to get better. And I mean, we all know no problems is a problem. So, Not everyone right, embraces right, that, but that's what we're hoping. Right. right. Yeah. So, so yeah. all you're doing, I think, with kind of the the left side is, you know, going to make it more difficult for you to find those. And 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 I think what's so great about the um, about whether you know it's rounding or process audits or gamble walks, but what what we're really doing here is we're trying to create a habit. You right. Know? trying to create a habit for leaders to get out of the office, out of the meeting room, go to where the work is actually being done and engage those people. And by creating that habit, whatever cadence that makes sense for the organization, at one place it might be you know, three times a day, at another right. place it might be once a day, at another place it might be once a week, yep. it might be once a month. I mean, there might be whatever cadence that makes sense for your organization, but I think the concept is, is that you're creating a habit for leaders to go out and engage to find out what are the problems, what are the barriers, how can we do things better? Right. So kind of one example of that might include what we sometimes call visual management. So we're going and we're looking at not management rounding, but nurse rounding, patient care rounding. And we, we can go out and I've seen a lot of organizations that will put a clock like this outside of every room. It's inexpensive. When somebody has finished the rounding, they, they flick their finger and reset this clock where the way we're looking at this, it tells me it's been 20 minutes since somebody last did rounding. If we see a clock that looks like this, and so maybe the visual is a little backwards. I tend to think red equals problem. But in this clock on the right, we see that all we know is the fact that it, that clock has not been reset in an hour. So it means the rounding didn't happen or the clock didn't get reset when the rounding occurred. So we need to ask questions and figure out how we can help. So, you know, if we look down a hallway and we see lots of white clocks, that tells us something. Again, either the rounding is not happening every hour or um, it's not being recorded. So as a leader, we want to ask why and do so. In, in a spirit of inquiry. What are the barriers? What do we need to do to help make this happen? Otherwise, if you come down too hard on people, people are gonna just walk down the hall and reset the clocks. Right, exactly. And you're gonna look and say, oh, okay, well, I see uh, lots of red, so maybe counterintuitively that red means everything's fine. We don't wanna create that environment. Um, so with that, I wanna turn things over and I'm gonna unmute uh, Michael Lombard who's going to share um, some story and uh, some thoughts and introduce himself first. So, Michael, are you there? Yes, sir. Great. Go ahead. All right. Thank you very much, Mark. I'm Michael Lombard. I'm the Corporate Director of Operational Excellence at Cornerstone Healthcare Group. And I've been working in hospitals for about the past five years. And over the past two years or so, I've been experimenting with the Toyota Kata approach, both as a learner and a coach. And one of the observations that I've made in, in all three of the healthcare organizations that I've worked for um, is that rounding um, can be perceived as sometimes, I'm not saying this in all organizations, but sometimes it can be perceived as just a kind of a to-do item to get off of your list. I've seen organizations devote the golden hour from 10 to 11 to rounding on patients or for uh, rounding on staff. And um, and sometimes it just becomes another checklist item to mark off your list. And I became interested in, you know, what what is the mindsets that go into that? And what, what causes it to be perceived that way as opposed to being perceived as an opportunity for us to uh, learn, to coach, to drive process improvement, and to engage our workforce in the process. And so, uh, as I started to kind of uh, understand a little bit about the Toyota Kata approach, it started to become a little bit clear. And, and on the next slide, um, I think that there's a visual that will kind of help explain it a little bit. And um, hopefully you can see the slide on my screen. It's yeah. still showing yeah, it, it uh, moved, my face. But yeah. Okay, very good. Um, 
So on the left, you see an image. It's kind of like your brain lifting up a barbell and lifting weights. And so what that's meant to signify is that um, there is a way that we can start to change mindsets. And so as it relates to rounding, there's a way that we can go from viewing it as just another to-do item on a manager's list that they want to cross off to something that is actually useful, valuable use of our time in developing our staff and driving process improvement. And I think the, the mechanism by which we start to bring about that mindset shift is represented by the statement on the right side of the slide, which says that every step is an experiment. And applied to rounding, I would contend that every time we round, every time we do a process observation, a gimbal walk, we should treat it as an experiment. And the hypothesis of that experiment would be that we expect to find abnormalities, and we expect some abnormalities to be related to personal training levels, some abnormalities to be related to process barriers that are preventing us performing to, the, to standard work, and some abnormalities are the result of innovation, of process improvement that hasn't, hasn't been captured yet. And so if we treat every time we do a gimbal walk or process observation or an audit as an experiment and we expect to find abnormalities, it puts us in a frame of mind that's very collaborative, that's very proactive, that's also very engaging with staff, takes us out of the this is just another to-do item mentality or even worse, the I'm the police officer here to catch you doing something wrong mentality. So that's just a way in which uh, mindset really does matter when it comes to daily management. Well, great. Well, thanks, Michael. Yeah, back to Mark. Okay. Yeah, Michael's going to rejoin us again uh, here in a bit. So, yeah, thanks for adding that context about this idea of rounding and, and uh, leaders going and, and, and being collaborative. I'm going to hand it to Greg here. <clears throat> and just really to address the the idea of, well, you know, how does Kinexus help do that activity to help create that behavior? A lot of times what what leaders are doing is they're walking around with a notepad. And as they go about their rounding process, they're jotting down notes and then it creates rework when they get back to their office. Um, or some of the notes may end up being, oh, we need to research you know, X, Y, and Z. And so one of the things that Kinexus does is we have a, a, a mobile platform. And so, you know, whether it's using the, the iPhone app that we have, you can easily take a picture of the problem, submit an opportunity for improvement right during that process, or whether it's pulling out a tablet um, and actually, you know, running the full featured um, version of Kinexus where someone says, you know, and brings up an issue and, and you want to do some quick research to see, hey, did we ever do a project or did we ever do any improvement work on that? So you can actually give some advice back, right back to the to the worker. Um, either way, Kinexus is basically kind of your, you know, kind of the, the brains from a standpoint of improvement work of the organization kind of on your hip at all times. Um, so you can either have that access right. or do that management. Yeah, to capture things while okay. you're rounding, make sure okay. things right. don't get forgotten. And that's another key point when we talk in a little bit about Kaizen. If you don't capture the problem, you can't help drive any Right, exactly, right, right. And and we, we see some of our other customers actually tracking um, the percentage of leaders that are rounding. And so, we have great run charts and that you can put in Kinexus data sets, however you want to think through this. And we see people tracking all sorts of data metrics. And in this case, we're, we're looking at a learning and growth metric um, from a, an organization that's kind of doing the classic balanced scorecard. And, and it's a very easy, visible place that everyone can access without having to dig through um, shared drives and have you know things in Excel spreadsheets emailed. So Kinexus makes that front and center. And then, like I mentioned before, you, you, you're literally walking around with the, the, the organization's brain of improvement work at your side. So if you need to search something, when you search, you can not only look through just you know, a subset of your improvement work, but you're actually looking through all of your opportunities for improvement, whether those are A3s or whether those are ideas, however your organization's using Kinexus. Um, you can also even look through your Kaizen events or your, your lean projects kind of all at the tip of your fingers. So you're not saying, well, let me get back to you on that. I know we did something about that 18 months ago. I just don't remember exactly. Yeah. And so really Kinexus can really make this a much easier process, I think, for, for leaders. Okay. Well, so now we're going to move into our third of the five daily management practices, and this is the idea of 
metrics or performance measures. So, you know, in, in my travels and with different organizations I've worked with, um, I, I see some really common problems. Uh, one is that uh, there's, there's an over-reliance on monthly performance measures. And these measures are often calculated or presented by some outside group and there's a lag time. So if, we, if we're here in October, we might have just gotten our August monthly metrics up on the wall. So that makes it really hard to discuss why performance is what it is when there's such a separation between the data and our discussion or a lot is lost in those monthly metrics. So we, it might be important to track long-term trends, but a lot of improvement work is driven by more timely measures. And then, you know, this example we see here, there's a lot that's really driven by cost and finance. And we need to have more of a, a balanced view of what we're trying to improve, um, service levels, turnaround times, quality. And you know, a lot of times these metrics are located far away from the workplace. They're down a hallway. They're not anywhere near where the team is actually discussing improvement and what they can do. So you know, I've seen examples of daily metrics and, and trying to make these measures more uh, visual so that we can get um, fast feedback, we can um, tie that into problem solving opportunities and track issues on the charts. Now, we, do, we want to be careful that we don't overreact to every single up mm -hmm. and down in a particular data uh, set, in a, in a particular chart. But when we have a, a statistically meaningful difference, either good or bad, we want to ask that question why and talk about it within the team. And, you know, these, these visual metrics, whether they're um, you know, tracked uh, on, on a board or in, in software helps the team kind of keep score back mm -hmm. to the sports analogy. You know, we don't play a football game and then look up at the scoreboard at the end. We're tracking the score as we go and we're adjusting our plans accordingly. Are we as a team down by 21 points or mm -hmm. are we up by 14? You know, how are we doing today? That's an important uh, discussion to have. And the mindset of leaders shifts from if you know, instead of being a cop, being a judge, you know, who's good, who's bad, um, to instead looking from a lean standpoint where lean leaders, of course, want to see measurable results, but we realize that results come from the right process. So it's not uh, a process of just pressuring people to make the numbers because that often guides, leads people uh, to fudging the numbers instead of actually improving. When uh, we're, we're a judge or a cop and, and people are afraid, that gets in the way of good improvement. So I think this lean mindset um, helps us realize that we can, we can be tough on the process mm -hmm. without being hard on the people, without blaming them or, or disengaging them, that we can get them involved in reacting um, to those measures and, and driving improvement, which is the thing we'll, we'll talk about next. Um, and in Kinexus, this is this is an area, Mark, that you know we've been doing a lot of work on for, for the past year. Of um, you know, One of my roles in the organization is to constantly talk to our customers. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? What problems are you having? How can Kinexus better support those? And just hearing a ton of... Um, you know, feedback on um, how can we make this whole key performance metrics and or balance scorecard, whatever they're they're referring to it, how can we make that easier, you know, and understanding that process. A lot of organizations have a, a really manual process where, you know, someone is responsible for, um, you know, going out and getting the data and putting it on a shared drive and there's Excel spreadsheets and there's version issues. So in Kinexus, every, every level of the organization has their own run chart area. So whether it's the whole organization, whether it's a department, whether it's a work group, they can literally have their own set of data and that can easily be visualized. Yep. And not only that, but the, the process improvement people can go look at all the other departments, whatever department they want yep. to go look at their KPI. So they don't have to um, you know, find out and figure out, oh, well, cardiology keeps it on this shared drive and radiology does this. And, oh, I need to call, you know, Tiffany for that one. It's all a standard place that everyone has access to and yeah. can easily and easily visualize. And, and people really have responded um, great yeah. to this. And so, you know, hopefully people are starting to see how these different pieces tie together. That mm -hmm. We don't just have these metrics in isolation, but we hope that they're tied to the overall strategy of the organization and that leaders are connecting those dots and reviewing the process that leads to those results right. and that this all 
fits together. And then, you know, that fourth piece, that next piece is not just measuring things, but to have some sort of process for Kaizen or continuous improvement. As we all, always talk about here at Kinexus, you need uh, a methodology. Mm -hmm. and, and Kaizen is one of those, I think, methodologies a lot of people are embracing. We need leadership, and then we have uh, some form of technology, which which Greg will talk about in a minute. But you know, Greg and I have both been influenced very deeply by uh, Mr. Masaki Amai from Kaizen Institute. He wrote the book, you know, 25, 26 years ago called Kaizen. That was Greg's start and continuous yep. improvement, and it was really helpful for me. But you know, as Mr. Amai emphasizes, you know, Kaizen is not just about projects or events. It's about everybody improving everywhere and every day. And, and that's the, I think, the really powerful thing when we see organizations doing formal three or four or five day projects for those bigger problems. That's mm -hmm. a form of Kaizen. Mm -hmm. But we can also engage everybody in identifying the dozens and hundreds of examples that we see in so many different um, workplaces. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand things back off uh, here briefly to uh, to Michael. Michael, are, are, are you still? Dark? Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I, I want to kind of go back to the same concept that I brought up before with the two images of the your brain kind of getting stronger and treating every step as an experiment. Um, when it comes, what I've observed in in organizations, hospitals, and, and other organizations, is that you, you get at least three different benefits from performing Kaizen, from performing um, daily improvement activities. And the, the most obvious ones that everybody knows about, you know, you get number one, process improvement. You get to make incremental improvement to your process. That's wonderful. Number two, I think most people realize you get to engage your people. You get to develop them as problem solvers, and you get them into to the habit of doing daily improvement. I think those are two pretty obvious ones. The third one that is wasn't obvious to me, but is now making more sense, is that you actually um, get, every time we do Kaizen, every time we do daily improvement, incremental improvement, it's an opportunity to practice as coaches as well. And the every step is an experiment applies here as well. One of the things I started learning that helped me become a better coach I'm still early on in my journey, but was realizing that every time I go to coach, it was an experiment, and it was an experiment in my coaching technique. Basically, the hypothesis was that I think if I introduce this tool just in time right now in this coaching cycle, that it will be useful, or if I explain a concept in this way, that it will be understood. And when I started treating those as experiments, it started to become a habit um, to always kind of reflect on my coaching technique and see where I could get better. And so when you think of Kaizen as part of a daily management system, I would say it, it's helpful to view it as not only an opportunity to drive process improvement and to engage staff, but also to develop ourselves as coaches by treating every coaching cycle as an experiment. I'll hand it back off to Mark. All right. Well, thanks, Michael. And you know, maybe in that vein, you know, some of the experiments that we see people do with Kaizen and continuous improvement involve methods like you see here. And, you know, Joe Schwartz and I wrote about methods like this in our book, um, Healthcare Kaizen. And, you know, you see examples of, you know, what are those relatively small ideas that people come up with when you ask them, hey, what can we make better? What gets in the way of you doing your work? This is a, on the left, a real example from a hospital it said, you know, patients were asking for ginger ale when they're nauseous and it's not stocked on our unit. So we have to go run to a different floor. I'm sure sometimes people didn't get ginger ale if nurses and staff were busy. So uh, the idea was really simple. Let's stock ginger ale. Let's talk to dietary services. That's going to increase patient satisfaction and reduce the amount of time that we spend. And, you know, these ideas are often tracked, uh, as you see here in the upper right, on a, a physical board that tracks progress from left to right. Uh, completed improvements might be written up in uh, a single page format, as you see in the lower right side of the screen. And, and these tactics are um, good for getting started. And, and part of that experiment is to ask, well, how will this um, drive improvement? But in those experiments, organizations sometimes uh, find challenges or problems that a physical board like that is only visible to the local team. Um, it's, it's hard to use with distributed teams. If you have an organization with staff in different sites, 
Um, it can be hard to share and spread completed ideas to, to people in different areas. It can be challenging to tabulate the benefits of improvement, and it can be hard for senior leaders or process improvement specialists to see at a glance what parts of the hospital need, uh, need help. So there are certain problems that, that come up, and I think you know, a lot of this, this is where I'll hand it back to Greg to talk about how Kinexus helps. So, I mean, the, the two fundamental kind of issues I really see with, with idea boards is, is one, you know, how do you get visibility for your ideas to get spread to other ideas? Um, and then two, you know, what happens when your idea board has been going on for three months, six months, a year, two years, and you now have, you know, dozens, hundreds, right. thousands of I these ideas. How do you go back in time to look in search? And so I think that's where Kinexus fits in really well. So we're looking at it, one of the typical screens, and we've just created, I've um, uh, created a pharmacy board view here, and we're showing all of the major areas of work that the pharmacy doing is doing. And you'll see on the far left that tile is their idea board, and and it's visible, they can run their OIs or ideas or OFIs, whatever whatever the organization's calling them, in a very easy and visible way. And not only that, but every single department in the whole organization, if they search for a term, everyone's idea board would come back. Or if, yeah. a, a, if the cardiology department wanted to see what the pharma, pharmacy department is working on, or if uh, the pharmacy department has an idea and they need to collaborate with another department, that all becomes really easy and facilitated now through Kinexus. Right. Or if pharmacy at site A wants to see what the pharmacy at site B is right. doing or has already done, there's that mechanism to, to be able to search and share and adopt and, or adapt ideas from others. And we asked Brian from Middlesex to, to, to present here, and, and we'll get um, to that in a second, but you're actually going to see a another manifestation of how you can use um, Kinexus to even do virtual boards. So we'll get to that here in a second. But. Okay. And, and before we go into that fifth topic and then bring Brian into the discussion, I would like to remind folks that if you have questions, uh, feel free to go ahead and submit those in any time. And, and it would be helpful if you want to address if that's a question for anybody to answer or if it's for me or for Greg or for Michael uh, or for Brian. Um, so as we go into this last topic, the idea of stand-up meetings or daily huddles. And, and here's a picture of what this might look like in a, a hospital laboratory. You know, it's uh, the whole team. And, and I put whole in quotes because, you know, we realize sometimes that, you know, we, we still have to continue lab testing. So we might not literally have everybody, but hopefully we're rotating who stays back to do the actual work um, so that people are, are able to participate in these huddles, both listening and participating. Um, as you see pictured here, generally it's a stand-up meeting because it needs to be kind of short and to the point. Uh, it might take 10 minutes. And then we, uh, as we are meeting every day, we might rotate leadership. It's not always the department director who should be running it, senior staff members. People can rotate that responsibility, but we do so in a way that perhaps follows a, a standard agenda. And I'll share an example of that in a second. But you know, we're getting together as a team, and you can see on the left-hand side of that picture, uh, what we see here on the left side of this picture, they have their performance measures. They're tracking turnaround times on certain key tests, um, which is a, a huge quality and, and, and patient satisfaction and patient throughput measure. Um, looking and saying, well, how, how are we doing yesterday? What are the trends? How did last shift do compared to the other shift? And that prompts our discussion. Why was that? Let's um, analyze a good day uh, or uh, a day where the performance wasn't as good. Um, not overreacting, but mm -hmm. looking at you know significant points where we're not meeting our stated goals to the emergency department or to other um, ordering physicians. But then the other part of that discussion is, you know, in this case, the board you see on the right. So what are our ideas? So a lot of these ideas come from just asking people. What, what should we fix? Or mm -hmm. what we observe through rounding, hey, it looks like you're really struggling to climb underneath that desk to plug in your portable computer. We can, we can maybe fix that. Or also tying it to our, our performance, longer term or the last day. And we can have that discussion really quickly. Um, I won't go through this in detail because I'll, I'll leave it in the slides and we'll invite you to go look at a blog post by uh, our friends and partners at Healthcare Performance Partners about huddles and standard agendas and what are the things you talk about. And 
think one of the common themes, I saw this when I worked back in manufacturing 10 years ago, it's a really good habit to start by having a safety topic of the day. Are there any safety concerns or here's a safety reminder to really emphasize that, you know, it's not lip service, but we're really going to build in this habit of talking first about safety before we address these other things that um, are also good um, huddle points. Um, so with that, I'm going to invite uh, our, our friend and, and customer, Brian Tabor from Middlesex Hospital, uh, to jump in and, and to introduce yourself and, and talk a little bit about your huddle process. Great. Thanks, uh, Mark and Greg, for having me. Um, as, as they mentioned, uh, we've been using Kinexus here at Middlesex Hospital now for about a year. Um, I work in the rehab department. I'm the manager for our rehab department. And we it's a small community hospital, Middlesex, but we kind of, we are over a vast uh, service area. So for in particular rehab, we actually have five different locations and we were struggling with uh, having process improvements that even within our own locations, we were all working independently on that really we could have been working together as a team. Uh, we've been on a kind of a journey through lean here at our hospital for the last few years and we rolled out the use of the Kaizen boards in many of our different locations um, but again, we were finding that it was limited to that it was only visible to that location, and we were looking for a way to to spread this out over uh, over a vast um, range of of employees and different departments. And as uh, Mark and Greg were mentioning, we you know, we started with the shared drive and trying to do things there, and and we're just hitting some some barriers. So uh, we had had Mark come to the hospital to help us with our Kaizen boards, and that's kind of when we first learned about Kinexus and we, uh, like I said, we've been using it for about a year now. Uh, as the pilot, the rehab department's been using it and we're just in the process of rolling it out to um, many other departments across the hospital so we can work more collaboratively. Um, so I, I think if it's still okay yep. with you, Mark and Greg, I'd love to share my screen um, that will show kind of what we've been working on. Yeah, I think we, we made you presenter, so hopefully this will work. Perfect. So hopefully, can you guys see my screen? We can. Yep, we can. Uh, all right. Um, so this is just a quick uh, overview of our dashboard that we are uh, working on. Um, again, we have five different locations, and we've we've decided to break it up so that each location in our stand-up huddles um, has the ability to report out on kind of the improvement projects that they're working on or items that they've seen that they feel need attention. Um, so every morning, we as a as a group, we meet for. 15 minutes where we just go through, here's their outstanding items, here's where we're getting hung up, um, and here's where we need to go from there. And we've started logging things that have been small little items, such as we need to change the way we're distributing forms for patients, and then we've started to experiment more down on using the larger projects to really track kind of bigger events across the department. Um, so one of the examples, we just had a really big redesign of our whole front office, our front end of the department. And we needed a way to, one, keep ourselves on task and what we needed to be doing to progress this, but then also to really look back and say, all right, what was our final benefit from this? So um, what I'm showing here is just an example of one of the projects that we're working on and then how it's broken up into all of the, the smaller opportunities of improvement. Um, so for instance, this is, again, our, our overall redesign and one of the pieces that we looked at was that we need a way to to uh, off, to track our authorizations and getting our notes signed back from physicians. So we've included in that here as one of our OIs um, that we're to develop a tracking sheet. Um, and then jumping to another one, um, we have a, a scheduling system that we use that's electronic, but it doesn't alert us when things are due. So how can we kind of build some pieces in that will help with that um, though those alerts. So again, this is one of the other pieces that we're working on. Um, and this is an example of one that uh, we had many different tasks that all kind of came about because of this OI to, to overall hopefully improve the process that we're using for scheduling. Um, so that's kind of in a nutshell how we've been using the, the software. It certainly has been great in the sense that it's been able to keep, again, our five different departments kind of on track with where we're going. and we're really excited to start rolling this out to other departments within the hospital um, so that we we can kind of we can get that cross departmental improvement what we've been finding is without rolling it across 
it's been where we kind of send something out to someone and then we have to do the, the back and forth via email and then get it back into the system. So it should be a, a really a great, great step to go forward from here. So I will turn it back to you guys and thank you again for having me. Yeah. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for, for talking about some of your experiences and, and what you're doing. And um, um, maybe we'll, people have some questions for you about that. But uh, we'd like to go ahead and wrap up and again, invite you to uh, put in questions. Um, one of our uh, good friends and uh, are the folks at um, the University of Michigan Health System. They've been a, a customer of ours. And one of their team members, um, Kevin DeHorty, talks about lean and daily work as a system. And if you can forgive, sorry for the, the awful wallpaper picture here on the right. Um, you know, he points out, I think, two really important things. If we have just parts of the system, if we have visual metrics without team huddles and gimbal walks, that could quickly become just wallpaper that nobody's looking at. And let's oh, nobody, nobody look at that picture from the 70s. But then I think they also have a great point says, well, if we just do huddles and gimbal walks in the absence of visual metrics, it runs the risk of becoming a social event. Now, I don't think anyone's hanging a disco ball um, over, their, over their huddle, but I think they have a great point that you have to be careful about trying to just pick and choose and say, well, we like huddles. We're going to do huddles. This is, it's a system. And in any system, um, all of our, our, the different parts of that system work together um, hopefully in harmony. Mm -hmm. um, we we um, want to keep that in mind and, and hopefully adopt this as a system and have uh, technologies that help support that. So uh, before we go uh, into Q&A here, we just want to do a few reminders about some things that we have available through Kinexus. One is our next webinar. That's actually going to be tomorrow. Um, was, I think, designed for customers, but it's open to the public. Greg, mm -hmm. if you want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, just the idea is um, over over lunch, it's going to be a, just a quick webinar, hopefully quite interactive. It was initially designed for customers, but we realized if, if you're not a customer and you want to see what we're up to, um, please join on. But you know, tomorrow we're going to talk about reports. There's a lot of new things we've done with reports. There's a lot of um, customization and default views and a lot of information that you can get from this. We're really starting to acquire um, the first, I, I think, you know, body of knowledge where I can and we can at Kinexus see behaviors in lots of different organizations very quickly. Mm -hmm. I, I look at it um, like you know, being a physician. You know, when I walk into a patient's room, um, there's a whole bunch of data points that I'm acquiring to figure out what, what is the status of that person's health? What do they need? And uh, what we're finding is that that same analogy can be applied to a culture of continuous improvement. So really by, by utilizing some of the reports in Kinexus, you can quickly get a, a very um, deep understanding of areas that are going really well in your organization and areas that um, could use a little bit more help in your organization. And that's right the, the, the some, most finite resource is time. So you want to know exactly how you should be spending it. And that can give a lot of insight there. Yeah. So sometimes leaders need to help kind of diagnose the organization. Where Where is their pain? Right. Uh, what what uh, organs or systems are functioning right. the way they should? Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and I'm starting to come up with a theory that there, there are five vital signs in health mm -hmm. uh, when you look at a patient. You know, the blood pressure, the pulse, the respiratory rate, the temperature, and the um, oxygenation of a patient. And I'm starting to realize that there's some vital signs to the culture mm. of a organization's um, um, continuous improvement efforts. And so um, it's just really interesting to start seeing it. We've noticed this over the years that we've been working together now and starting to get this data that you can start to see inflection points. Mm. And these reports and numbers start to tell a story. Yeah. And it's, it's quite fascinating. Yeah, and, and part of that story, and I've heard a lot of people say, you know, the, the one maybe most important vital sign for the health of an organization and, and its culture is just the volume of improvement activity. Right. So that's why, you know, that's a, the, the first chart that you see here on the left. We can do surveys every two years, mm -hmm. but we can see, I think, you know, empl if employees are happy and engaged and connected to the organization, they participate in improvement because it, it makes things better for their patients and, and it creates a better workplace and is less frustrating. Mm -hmm. And there's all these different intrinsic motivations that um, we have to tap into. And I think, you know, kind of that coach 
mode of leader does so more effectively than a cop or a judge right. uh, would do. Um, so I hope you'll go and, and sign up for that webinar if you're interested in that tomorrow. You'll see a link at kinexus.com slash webinar. And we also have uh, a growing library of past webinars that are recorded that you can uh, find if you go to kinexus.com slash webinar, click on that big webinar library button. And uh, we also have a blog. Uh, if you go to blog.kinexus.com, uh, boy, I haven't eaten lunch yet, so that burrito looks really tasty. Mm. But you know, we've got different posts. Some of them are lighthearted. Some of them are uh, pretty serious. I'm um, talking about uh, improvement and, and staff engagement in different ways um, that, that can help organizations. So we invite you to go and check out the blog. You can, um, you can sign up to get notified about new blog posts via email if you'd like. And we've got some other resources, uh, including eBooks. So if you go to kinexus.com, this is all free. Fill out a small form, and you can get these um, sent to you and, and download them. We, we have videos, and we encourage you to explore the menus there in the website because we really are very passionate about improvement. And uh, we, we love our customers, and we would love for uh, more customers to come on board, but we're also um, just really uh, happy and excited to share mm -hmm. um, good ideas and resources with people, and, and this is one of those ways. And so with that, um, we'll, we'll go into Q&A. So you can see uh, our websites, uh, Twitter handles, email addresses, things like that. We certainly hope that you'll reach out to us. Um, so here's a, we've got a question here from Julie. Thank you uh, for the question. Are there any simple but quality lean organization assessment tools that are available for free? Um, that's a great question. I mean, I think some of the different frameworks that are out there, either for self-assessment, um, a lot of people use the, the Malcolm Baldridge Award criteria. Um, Baldridge Award is, or the Baldridge criteria is a great way of looking at, you know, uh, our quality culture and, and our processes and systems around quality. Uh, a lot of organizations use Lean as the way of helping deliver um, the goals of the Baldridge criteria. So that's one thing I would recommend if you search Malcolm Baldridge. It's a, a U.S. government National Institute of, of Standards and Technology uh, program. Um, there, there's also an, uh, there's another model, very lean specific, called the Shingo model, mm -hmm. which is through the uh, the Shingo organization at Utah State University. Uh, Utah State University. So if you go to shingo.org, uh, I'm pretty sure they have some self-assessment tools, or at the very least, they have their model that talks about uh, principles and, and behaviors and systems and methods that you might be able to use to self-assess. And I'm going to answer the question a little a little differently, Mark. Um, at first, I, I struggled to understand what the question was, and then you started to answer, and I go, oh, okay, now I understand the question. But um, I think probably the the best assessment tool that's free is the Gemba Walk. You know, <laughs> right. go to your organization at the front line, whether you're a health organization or a regular organization, and just pick someone and just ask them, you know, what what ideas do you have? Are you being listened to? What are your barriers? Go to a local leader in a department and say, show me your improvement work. Mm -hmm. What are y'all working on? And and I think, honestly, that might just be the best assessment. Um, yeah. Of yeah. Simply just you know, going and exploring and, and, uh, and asking questions. And I think there's, you know, a related question that often comes up is, is the question around benchmarking. Right. Should we go and learn what other people have done or mm -hmm. should we engage our own people to develop their own solutions based on the problems they've identified? It's probably a mix of both, it but is. I think yeah. sometimes the pendulum swings way too far on, on the benchmarking side. My, sure. my blog post today at leanblog.org is about, the New York Jets, who apparently benchmarked and tried copying some trick kickoff return play that the TCU mm -hmm. college football team ran, and it failed miserably because I think they just copied one aspect of it without really thinking through um, the whole thing. That's one of the risks mm -hmm. when, when we benchmark. Um, I think the other question is around uh, goals. Yeah. How good should we be? Well, I think a lot of times in, in Lean, we step back and ask, well, how good can you be? Are you happy being in the top decile of a group of hospitals that have roughly the same performance? Or do you really want to drive towards, let's say, zero staff injuries or uh, zero hospital acquired infections? Um, I think you know, in that pursuit of perfection that we see in lean, 
we may look at benchmarks just to see, well, how bad of a problem do we have? But if we're better than average, we're, we're not happy about that. We still drive to try to keep getting better. Um, and there's another another question here, Mark. Are we good if I ask that? So I'm just going to yeah. paraphrase, paraphrase this question. So um, this person's asking a question. They seem to be in a department um, and they want to get started on, on working on a um, system um, to, to manage their improvement work, but the whole organization is not on board. Right. Is there a role for this to happen in a smaller unit that isn't the whole organization? Like, let's say an emergency department in a hospital or, you know, one manufacturing location in a greater manufacturing company. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, there are components of this lean system, maybe use Michael's word, that can, that can be an experiment mm -hmm. in, in a local way and realizing that we maybe aren't going to have the benefits of the entire lean management system. So something like strategy deployment tends to be, um, you know, it needs, needs to be organization wide, top to bottom. You know, the first year of strategy deployment might not touch all levels of the organization, but eventually, I mean, system strategy deployment is inherently a very systemic method. Um, departments can certainly experiment with the other components of, sure. of a lean Gamble management walks. system. Gamble walks, huddles, Kaizen, performance measures. Those measures might not be aligned real well to what the rest of the organization is doing. But when I've seen um, uh, departments like that lab that was pictured in a couple of my slides, they were, they were really doing that uh, on their own. The, depart the lab director, the chief pathologist, um, they really worked to create a, a local culture of continuous improvement with the 200 or 300 people that worked within that lab. Sometimes people get started and uh, they, they, they say, well, okay, this worked great. Let's try to spread. Mm -hmm. Let's learn from that experiment and see what we can do throughout the organization. And uh, Michael's ears perked up when I said experiment. So he, he's got a comment here maybe to help us wrap up. Michael. Yes, sir. I just wanted to reiterate what you were saying. Um, I've, you know, I've been working in, in hospitals and I've kind of seen sometimes there's a groundswell of, of lean thought from the front line. Sometimes it's the middle level where I'm at currently is kind of at the you know, top level. There's a lot of lean thought. And what I always think of is that wherever you start, you're, you're, you need to be thinking that it's easier to act your way to a new way of thinking than think your way to a new way of acting. So if you're trying to start in one area with an experiment using some of these lean principles and you want ultimately for the senior leaders of the organization to see what's going on and for them to start thinking lean and start realizing that it has huge potential, if those are kind of the things that you're wanting to see, I, I absolutely recommend framing it as an experiment because that's something that the senior leader, that's a way for them to act their way to a new way of thinking. They don't have to understand lean, but they have to act like it. They have to act like, oh, an experiment. That's something we can do. We can have this department running these experiments using gimbal walks and daily management system techniques. And then that does a couple of things. It helps them get into the lean way of thinking over time, act their way to new ways of thinking. But it also uh, kind of gives us a little bit of of I guess take some of the anxiety out of trying to make make lean be perfect right out of the gate. It mm -hmm. kind of gives us the latitude to <laughs> try things, see what works, reflect on it, and make adjustments. And then it becomes just a habit to do that over and over again and keep experimenting with more and more lean concepts. Yeah, and I, I think that you, you bring up really good point about this this sometimes this need for people to do this perfectly and. That, that makes them very cautious and hesitant. I usually try to encourage people, you know, the, the best way to get started is to start. And you'll <laughs> do a little bit of studying and planning and then go and try some things and be reflective and see what's working or having a coach observing and helping you and then go and get better. You know, the um, culture of continuous improvement is not going to happen because we think about it and talk about it. We have to take action and um, realize, well, okay, we, we may have some missteps. And I think mm -hmm. as leaders, it's good to be open about that. Hey, I, I didn't react well to your idea that I thought was silly. I apologize for that. And we're gonna, you know, they, that, you know things are gonna happen, but it's really nothing that's gonna totally derail uh, an approach like this. So I, I think with that, um, we'll, we'll have to wrap up here. We're getting close to the top of the hour, but I wanna thank uh, Dr. Greg Jacobson for being here. I also wanna thank Thank Michael Lombard and Brian Tabor for being our guests and for adding so much to the discussion today. So again, we are going to share a link to the slides in the recording. You'll get that via 
email. And we also ask you to please fill out uh, the feedback survey about the webinar in our own efforts at continuous improvement, your ideas, your feedback, that's all very helpful. Extremely helpful. Uh, to us. So again, thank you for joining us and uh, we'll, we'll see you next time. Good afternoon.